This is Zach, Annie, and Lola in their sweet school bus conversion named Stormy. Follow along as we do a tiny wood stove installation of their 44 kilowatt stove. Okay, we've unboxed their 44 kilowatt. <clears throat> and the first step is to take it outside, put the feet on it, the flue flange, put a chunk of pipe, and uh, do an outside burn. Let that uh, paint cure any residual oils and stuff. Let that, so we're not burning that in their space. Let's go do that now. Okay, so we're gonna put the legs on and um, the, uh, the bottom is painted after the holes are in, so sometimes a little bit of paint can get in some of those first round of threads, which can be tricky. You want to make sure that it's, it's squared up so that you don't, you don't get it you know, off kilter and, and mess up the threads. You can use just a, a tap. I think this is a, a six millimeter. Um, or just be you know, careful with the, uh, with the threads as you put it in there. Um, if it feels off, uh, don't drive it home, kind of uh, finesse it a little bit. Okay, we're going to seal a section of pipe inside the flue flange with some, uh, some compound here. And basically you wet the inside, squirt a little bit of that in there, let it dry for an hour, and then you fire the stove and that um, this becomes rigid and then fractures off. It'll either fracture off to the flange or the pipe and it'll be a, just a perfect, perfect seal. Okay, that gasket stuff is in there and it's been an hour. It's dry, so we're gonna, we're gonna fire this baby up. Fire it up. So we have the primary and secondary wide open and the air wash wide open. Small little sticks in there. Ironically, it's uh, July, <laughs> and it's going to be probably 100 degrees today. All right, we've been burning for I don't know 10, 15 minutes or so, and just a little 20-inch section of pipe. The stove is drafting fine. Um, you are seeing a little bit of smoke coming off both the pipe and the. Really see any off the stove yet but as that um, residual oils and stuff from the manufacturing process plus the paint curing you're gonna get some of that off gassing as it cures so it's best to do that outside we can we can shut this guy down and you can see as you open up that air wash you can see the uh, the air coming over, keeping that glass clean. It keeps that primary clean and also allows ash and stuff to drop into the pan so you can easily remove it. Okay, our, our gasket here is definitely set. The stove is uh, it's cooled down. And I'm going to countersink uh, maybe two, three holes in this since they're going to be beating down the road. We want to put uh, some of these little uh, machine screws, but we don't want, and we could just use self tapping stainless or something through the flange, but really don't want to see it. So we're just going to put these in there. So I'm going to drill a, uh, I think it's a 9, 964 hole and then uh, since it's a, a machine screw I'm going to need to if it had a point I could just drive it in but I'm gonna uh, tap out the inside pipe so it drives in. Okay there's the uh, countersink hole. I'm gonna drill a hole and then tap that inside pipe. So that's threaded nicely and then put our little uh, machine screw okay, in. Okay, got the uh, ember protection on the bottom, then the heat shield. We got ceramic spacers one inch. Air gap behind, bottom, sides, top. And then for this window, not sure if we need to, um, yeah, put something there, but we could easily, uh, you know, just add like a 
piece of um, cement board or something when they're using the stove and whether or not they can just pull it out. So we'll wait and see how hot that back gets. It's about ready to place the stove and then cut the hole. Getting the trim put on the, uh, the hearth here. Fifth time's the charm. <laughs> I like to measure once, cut five times. Yes. That looks good. I like it. Alright, we got the, the stove placed, we got the heat shields up, and we are going to uh, pack a pencil down, pack a pencil down, put it underneath through the, uh, the holes, kind of mark it, move it, drill the holes. We're going to drill the holes a little bit bigger. We got quarter inch hardware, and we're going to go with the 5 16 hole. And then uh, we got some nylon lock nuts to put on it, plus some fender washers for the underside. Once we get it set, then we'll kind of figure out our little 45 offset to jog, jog around the, uh, the top roof rack. Now that you finally got it, got it done. So I'm just going to wiggle that a little bit like that. And there's my, there's my mark. Actually, I had to shave down the pencil a little bit. Didn't fit in the hole like it was. We're going through. We'll do fender washers and then these nylon nylon nuts. What do you got there? That is a six inch hole saw. How do you feel about uh, <laughs> drilling a six inch hole in your roof? A little anxious, but got to do it to get it done. So All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Sorry, roof. Got the hole through, so we're just cutting back the, uh, the wood material from the insulated pipe. The double adapter reduces down from insulated down to single wall. The um, the stock crimp on it it doesn't really fit very well in in the single wall, so it needs to be uh, just persuaded a little bit, um, crimped just a little bit further. And then it's a very nice snug, very nice snug fit. So um, yeah, that just needs to be crimped down a little bit more to fit in there snugly. So for the roof support bracket, you can mount it on the underside of the roof if you have some good things to mount it to. Inside of the bus, there's just um, there's not any interior skin minus the um, quarter inch just wood plywood. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to mount this on top. And because these little uh, these little legs will stick out past the uh, the pipe boot, we're gonna trim them down, trim them down a little bit so they fit underneath the boot, and then we'll mount this and screw this to the top uh, body of the bus. Okay, we got the um, the bracket placed, and we kind of just squared it up with the uh, the roof rack since. Who knows if the, the rig is level or not. Got a little carnage from the, uh, the raw cut metal here. We just use a 13 millimeter to um, cinch up um, onto the pipe, the bracket, roof support bracket on the pipe. And then these guys, once you get it plumb, then you cinch these guys down. And next up, we're going to seal up all around this and put the... Um, the silicone pipe boot. So we, we drew out where the pipe boot's gonna go so that we can put kind of a bead or some kind of sealant around and we can put the boot on. Putting some self-tapping screws around the edge and then we're gonna seal it up from the, uh, the gasket to the roof line around that edge. Then we put the, uh, the storm collar in the roof vent. 
and the trim ring on the inside, connect the stove pipe, and we're good. Okay, so we have the, the, the trim ring, we have our clearance around our pipe, and then you just take one of the little U's, secure it, and then put the other one in, secure it, and then you're, you're trimmed out. So we kind of goofed and we put a 20 inch section and put the little gasket in, and really because I guess we didn't, we weren't anticipating that we needed to offset because of of ribs and the rack and all that. But we're having to jog a little bit and really we need this pipe to grow or shrink so that we can easily connect it to the offset. So we're gonna swap that out and then we should be good to go. So we pulled off the, uh, the pipe and this is what that um, stuff looks like when it's cured. So it makes just a, would make a, a perfect seal in there. Okay, so we had to cut off a piece of pipe. If you have to cut this, you want to cut off the female end. So the female end is basically just open pipe. And this is one millimeter, so it is very difficult to crimp. And it's a very steep crimp. So um, yeah, cut off the female end and use the male end. So we're going to connect this here and then hopefully it'll perfectly go into the telescoping place. piece. It just kind of extends to, to fit that joint. And then we'll raise up the clamp and cinch it all together. Okay, there's the roof vent. It could be taken off during travel and you could just put a cap there. And then you have the uh, storm collar and that is sealed with um, some, um, it's kind of some higher temp silicone and then that way as water runs potentially down the pipe it's not running down the joint of the silicone pipe boot it runs down the storm collar then onto the base of the boot and down and then we've got some self leveling I don't know what that junk's called but um, some stuff between the boot and the roof and then there's some also some sealant underneath that underneath the self tapping screws so it should be It'd probably be a good idea to put some over each of the uh, the bolt holes or the the um, yeah the top of those self tapping screws just to be safe. But otherwise, it is is good to go. It's installed. Got the heat shield, ember protection on the bottom. Trimmed it out. We got the. Uh, telescoping section. We had to offset because of uh, some obstacles in the bus. We've got the trim plate there. And then up top we got the vent, storm collar, silicone pipe boot. She's ready.